Hello there! Let us talk about that time when Half-Life was supposed to get product placements by Coca-Cola. Well, kind of. And to understand the reason why, let me elaborate a bit and expand into other games as well. If you want to ground your game in the real world, it is a very reasonable approach to utilize familiar aesthetics that the player already knows. That can be architecture, color coding, a logo, a theme or even a sound, or something that mimics a familiar branding or popular style of music. Entire games can lean on established aesthetics of popular media that exists outside of the context of video games to make the game immediately feel familiar to the player. Grand Theft Auto Vice City copied the theme and aesthetics from popular media such as Miami Vice and Scarface, and to stay with an GTA example, with Grand Theft Auto's Pisswasser beer, you would immediately think of a parody of a generic German beer. It just clicks in your head and you think, hey, I know that element, even if it's just subconscious. This technique can be tremendously helpful if you want to ground your science fiction games in the real world making them relatable to the player's real life. Of course, this cannot be done everywhere. You would have a hard time passing an M60A3 as a familiar element in Star Wars. It would be just absolutely out of place. But where this does help is with science fiction based in the real world. And this is where we circle back to Half-Life, because an M60A3 or an M1 Abrams does fit nicely into the Half-Life universe. And that's exactly what Valve did. Well, the M1, not the M60. And they wanted to use this exact technique, even with the vending machines, by introducing actual Coca-Cola machines. Or... this is all just bullshit and they were lazy, because that's easier than making up your own brand. You decide. Anyhow, during the development of Half-Life, Valve actually used Coca-Cola company brands such as Coca-Cola, Minute Maid and Fruitopia for their vending machines. The cans that spill out of broken machines even come in the Fanta, Coca-Cola Light and Sprite variety. Now, one can of course argue these were merely placeholders, if it was not for that one story told by an old developer. They approached Coca-Cola if they were cool with having their brand featured in Half-Life. And apparently Coca-Cola was rather positive about that idea. As reported, they were on the verge of saying yes, but then they learned of a new feature. This one. Valve introduced the ability for the player to destroy vending machines and Coca-Cola was not happy about that. The Coca-Cola company feared that destructible vending machines in Half-Life could incite vandalism against Coca-Cola vending machines in the real world. You know, on the face of it, it seems pretty ridiculous. What did they imagine? Half-Life fans arming themselves with crowbars and going out in droves demolishing Coca-Cola products, shooting at vending machines? Ridiculous. Eh, come on. Get out of here. Now, this. That's the shit. Valve must have been really disappointed in the decision to deny them the use of the original Coca-Cola branding. Because the time Half-Life 2 was in development, they switched to Pepsi. Oh yes, there are actually Pepsi machines in the Half-Life 2 beta. But if this was just a placeholder, or they actually asked Pepsi as well, and then they declined the offer as well, well, that's unknown. So this concludes the little trivia story about how Half-Life almost got Coca-Cola branding in it. It's kind of a silly thing, but... Honestly, I am not too sad about it. I find product placements in video games rather annoying. Now, I am not saying this would have been as obnoxious as Monster Energy sponsoring an entire Need for Speed game and characters holding cans onto the camera at every given moment, but still, I, uh, I can enjoy my Half-Life without genuine Coca-Cola. Because with the final design, yeah, I know what it is supposed to be and I'm fine with that. I don't need Coca-Cola branding there. Would have made a weird precedent and uh, imagine they have, would have struck a deal and Coca-Cola would have ended up paying them to put their products everywhere. Imagine Counter-Strike maps littered with Coca-Cola stuff. Eh, I really prefer Pop Dog. Just imagine genuine Coca-Cola skins for your guns in CSGO. 
I can go without it. <laughs> Anyhow, what do you think about it? Am I just uh, too grandpa about this whole thing, or too anti-capitalist? <laughs> Who knows, uh, maybe not all of you share my feelings towards the product placement stuff. Hmm. You know, thinking about it, you could have also gotten genuine like products, like uh, a Coca-Cola can with Gordon Freeman on it, or some other Half-Life related stuff. I guess by now these would have made really expensive collector's items. Hmm, I find myself liking that idea, kind of. Uh, you know, ever since I played Half-Life, I can't really shoot on normal targets again. They, they were just... They're just too bland, you know? This is way better. So at this point, a special thanks to our supporters on Patreon, who of course got to see this video first. To them, and everyone else, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you guys next time. Until then, have a nice day and as always, goodbye and guten Tag. Oh yeah, and uh, by the way, oh yeah, I'm not endorsing any of these brands here. Hmm, granted, refreshing, but not as good as Getränk. Getränk. <laughs>